with the Gen Con edition of Hey My Friend Made a Thing. And today I have the awesome Banana Chan. Thank you for having me on. Oh, of course. Thanks for coming to the mobile edition of the show. This is great. Um, yeah, it's, it's fabulous. Um, apologies for the noise. We're at the Diana Lynn Jones Award, I think. And uh, yeah, and congrats to Alex who fucking won tonight. Ah! I'm so excited for you, we love you! Um, anyway, so we have so much cool stuff we want to talk about. A short little episode, hopefully we'll get a longer one at the Gen Con. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, so what are, you, what are you working on right now, Banana? So, um, I'm working on two things that I can actually talk about right now. Uh, one of them is called Gen Shea in the Banquet Hall, which is a tabletop role-playing game where you are playing family members that are running a Chinese restaurant in the 1920s in San Francisco. So the game is about dealing with a lot of racism and you know, a lot of different things, a lot of like troublesome clients that come into the restaurant. Meanwhile, at nighttime, Jiangxi, which are Chinese popping vampires, come out at night and try to attack everyone. They're legit like the coolest vampires on the planet. <laughs> Yeah, they're a lot of fun. They are. So, they are a lot of fun. I was are they the ones that have to pick up all the rights? Like said, yes, so. they are. They yeah. have to right, right. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, if you have a John Chi after you, you're supposed to take a bunch of sticky rice and just plop it on the floor, and uh, it'll slow them down for a little while. Yeah. And they have other ways to We want to instruct the viewers just in case they have a vampire after them. Uh, so they have other weaknesses yeah. as well. They can't be around so crows when they throw. Oh, oh. Yeah. So that's like another fear of theirs. That's why you never see them in the day. Uh, and uh, another uh, thing is that uh, they uh, are scared uh, of vinegar. Uh, so uh, if you throw vinegar at them, that's Which is uh, interesting because I know there are some other uh, Asian vampires that use vinegar mm -hmm. to like shrink up their guts so they can go uh, back in the dark. Yeah. That would be uh, like the Philippines and the Malaysia. Yeah. So, so vinegar is super important. Uh, so they're afraid of vinegar. Or they're like the oh, they hate vinegar. Okay. So if you have a John Shea after you, like spray vinegar on them and it'll fuck them up pretty good. Oh yeah, So San Francisco is a really interesting place. Yeah. As far as like uh, the history of Asian Americans in America, there's just a lot that goes on. Yeah. Yeah. So during that time period, it was around the same time as like the Chinese Exclusion Act. So um, I didn't even know that was a good point yet. There was a lot of stuff going on. There was a lot of like cultural tensions, uh, racial tensions between everyone. And I think that was like what we, my uh, writing partner Sen Lim and I wanted to like really focus on, which was just like. Uh, trying to create this setting where you know that it's really close to us, that it's home, uh, home like, it's home for us, but also just like you know something that is relevant to us. Sorry, sorry, we are outside. And I mean, it feels very timely right now to be just like, hey, remember, we've done this before, and all kind of decided it was a terrible idea, remember that? Like, but also it feels like a lot of people have forgotten that part of history. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's not something that's talked about a lot. It's like something that's... Uh, I don't want to say it's forgotten, but it's just not actually... So you have threat coming from so many different places, but I feel like... Uh, in addition to being a mundane story of mundane horror and supernatural horror, there's also kind of like a macro and micro because like it's an intimate story. A family business is so stressful yes. and, it, and it takes so much out of you like a vampire, you know? Like you have to put everything you have on the line to make the restaurant work. Like it takes. So I feel like for a vampire story, that's really appropriate. This is going to be such a fucking rad game, you guys. Can't wait to play it. So when are you going to run it for me, by the way? Well, um... And of course, you're setting me <laughs> the game right away, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, great, see? <laughs> Accountable to the whole let's, internet. Let's wait until it's a little bit more ready. Woo! So you'll 
have to finish. We're going to definitely play test it. Okay. Well, how about I play test your game and you'll play test my new game? That sounds good to me. Okay. Keep in mind, it is a playtest. We're not going to play test. Okay. Okay. Alright, alright. That's final life. That sounds good. That sounds good. What else is exciting you right now? You mentioned you really like like board games and role playing games getting yeah, so, together. Talk about that with us a little bit. So something that I've noticed a lot recently is that uh, board games, a lot of board gaming companies, they're trying to do, dip their feet into the role playing waters. So we've been seeing a lot of hybrids between role playing and uh, and board games, and that's really cool. It's very interesting because we, I mean, we've seen it before, but now it's like an even larger level. Like companies like Renegade are pumping out games that have both storytelling elements as well as. All I know is that every time I try to play House on Haunted Hill, I was going to turn it into a role-playing game, and I'm like, look, we have character sheets and stats, and they'll never role-play with me. So, like, I feel very validated by this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like, yeah, yeah. That's actually another project that I'm working on called Nutshells. Oh, tell us about Nutshells. Nutshells is a coloring book where you cut the houses out. So you're cutting out different rooms and you're building a story from them. So, so it's like an actual physical thing you get to form. Yes. Get to form. yes. I feel like that's such a cool way to interact with uh, with a story. It's like with your own. Thank you. So that's really neat. It's another domestic horror theme. Uh, it's that. based off of the Francis Glesmoldly's Nutshell Studies. Okay. Uh, which Wait, are those like the dollhouses that you use for crimes? Yes, those are. So it's the forensic... Guys, this is so cool. <laughs> so this woman... Uh, Lee, uh, a very long time ago, made these doll houses, uh, which had murder scenes in them, which yes. were later used in forensic science. I was in a museum once that had a bunch of these doll rooms with the murder scenes. It was the coolest shit ever. Super creepy. Yeah, it's great. It's amazing. So they were using them in forensic science as training tools for a while. Um, now they're in museums, like you said, like an art yeah, museum. Yeah, it's it's super cool, especially because um, making something bigger or smaller, I feel, is such an important way to disconnect. Yes, yes. And like to be like, to shove yourself out of yourself as like a mortal being and into like kind of a view yeah, in the window. Yeah. That's really cool. So what we're hoping to accomplish with this game is uh, Kira McGrun and I are actually working on this. No shit! Yeah, so this is... Kira's awesome, you guys! She's an awesome friend of mine. Yeah, she's great. So we're working on this game together um, and we're hoping that it will sort of create this, uh, this sense of, the reason I asked, you know, this weird, surreal, surreal sense of horror. Yeah. Did you know that the way I first met Kira was in an all-night horror life? Really? Yeah, it was like a. Well, I don't know if it lasted all night, but it like started at midnight, and like it was like me and Kira and AJ and like John and a couple other people. Were awesome people. Yeah, I know, and it was like super creepy, and like throughout the night, people just kept like getting called outside by like spirit voices, and then they would like come back, but it wasn't them. And like, yeah, like my best friend got taken, and like it was it was. Cool. And John was like, and there were like three different voices. And John was like the rational voice, so he'd come and whisper near me like, "Just give up. It'll be so much easier." Like, I know, I know. So like, Kira has great, great sense of horror, and she was a player there at Wizard. So I know it was it was really fun. <laughs> I was like a boy though. This sounds amazing. I don't know. I think it was just something that happened over there at Gen Con. Was, I don't know if it existed like as a thing, but it was like it was an intense, amazing experience. Super cool. Yeah, I know. So, so you're making this game called Nutshell, um, which is going to have like a physical component and be like kind of a board game, kind of a coloring book, kind of a role playing game. Yes. So it's mostly. Uh, a game. So it's mostly a tabletop role playing yeah. game, okay. but you're going to have to cut out the components yourself and build it out a board. So you cut out the doll house, uh, sorry, the, uh, the paper dolls, which are your characters, and your dolls are going to go around this house, and uh, you can do a variety of different things, like uh, move and search, or move and hide, because ultimately there will be a <laughs> Yeah, so I feel like this is almost a weird return to old school stuff in a way, 
because really the only game where people use like minis and maps and stuff traditionally is D&D and then we were all like no no we don't need all that shit we only need our imaginations this is actually a little bit of a callback to yeah and now it's like actually how about we do have shit and move it around because like that adds a, a, like a tactile dimension yeah. to like, the feeling. And I think it's like a nice way to introduce people into role playing games. Yeah, true. Um, because you know, like a coloring book feels very um, yeah, it feels approachable. very approachable. You know, and especially with like like moms can get them at Walmart. Yeah, exactly. So it's it's you know it's like <laughs> it's not so much geek shit. It's just like you know that's so cool. Like so what's your what's your restaurant called again? It's Oh, Jiangxi in the banquet hall. Oh, yeah. guys, that's such a cool name. I'm so hyped for it. I can't wait to play this game. Okay, so uh, we should probably close up. Um, we've had a lovely interview. Thank you so much, Banana, for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. This is great. Oh, yeah, um, this is literally all of this is like. I know a lot of people that are rad and do cool shit, so I'm like, how can I get them more attention and maybe even more money or, or cool stuff? Um, so, what is what is something that you would like to leave people with? What do you want to share? Oh, by the way, um, after Gen Con, I'll have uh, links to all of this shit in the description. Okay, the first thing I want to say is congratulations, Alex Roberts, on winning the Diana. Yes! Award. Woo! Big milestone in like storytelling games and everything. Like, yeah. I think that's amazing. Yeah. Um, and also, Alex is an awesome person. So, like, this yeah. is great. I've only just met them and I think that they're awesome. Yeah. Um, and also, if you want to make a game yourself, if you're like interested in like, you know, role playing or anything like that, then just dive right into it. Like, play a bunch of games, see yeah. what sticks. There's some things that you might like more than others. There's no right or wrong way of doing it. I actually am going to be a judge of the 200 word RPG challenge, which uh, actually one of my first interviews with, with David Sherduan, who puts this together. It's a great way to get into designing. It's 200 words, anybody can do it. So, yeah, so you would like to tell people if you want to make a video, just make a game. Yeah. And you can be as cool as this show right here. Okay, well, we gotta go party and drink. So, bye, everyone!